Hi everybody. I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be covering Haunt. Now, Haunt made his first appearance in a self-titled Haunt issue number one in October of 2009. And Haunt is actually a combination character between Daniel and Kurt, which are two brothers. Now, when these two merge, they cause a living white and black substance that is spiritual and magical in nature to erupt from Daniel's eyes, ears, and mouth. This substance is a type of ectoplasm, and he's engulfed with it, but he has to share his body with Kurt while they are the Haunt character. When they're in this form, Daniel seems to be the captain, and Kurt is the second in command. Kurt will sometimes guide his brother, but Daniel takes over during fights and risky situations. He's also trained as the top agent in his agency, and having his brother lend him his skills add to his already impressive hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, while in the Haunt form, he exhibits razor-sharp claws, and he can cling to walls. He has heightened agility as well, and a level of invulnerability. He can create long spikes and bladed weapons and tendrils that are similar to the alien symbolites of Marvel Universe. And he can shoot the symbiotic-like substance from himself towards a chosen target. Haunt also displays an impressive degree of superhuman strength. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Haunt is a combination of two characters that are brothers. And these brothers' real names are Daniel Kilgore and Kurt Gilgore. The priest, Daniel Kilgore, is far from an exemplary person or a quote-unquote servant of God. Daniel regularly visits prostitutes, smokes, curses, and exhibits multiple other bad behaviors, including despising his brother, Kurt. Daniel hates his brother and agrees to see him only during confession. Daniel listens to his brother's confessions, but hurries him through it and doesn't even give him penance because he doesn't care. Daniel says he only sees Kurt so no other, and I quote, poor priest does not have to carry the burden of my brother's sins, end quote. You see, Kurt Kilgore leads a life of murder and espionage. He works for an organization that provides him with targets and objectives, which usually call for bloodshed. Even though he's a killer, Kurt tries to be a good person and do what's right. But one day while he was on an important mission, he killed the scientist he was sent to rescue because the scientist was performing cruel and painful experiments on people. Kurt then led the survivors of the experiments to freedom. Daniel leads a life of self-loathing and considers his life miserable. Both Kurt and his mother realize that Daniel is unhappy. Eventually, Kurt is killed by unknown people from his own organization or a competitor. After the funeral, Kurt's goat visits Daniel. Kurt begs Daniel to visit his wife, Amanda, because she's in danger. Daniel selfishly refuses to help, but he finally agrees when his mother is mentioned. Their conversation reveals Daniel's contempt for his brother began with Kurt's wife, Amanda. But Kurt asks Daniel to put aside whatever differences there are between them, and Daniel grudgingly agrees. Daniel begins to question himself, as he believes he's talking to his dead brother, but believes he's only imagining the whole incident. And when Daniel arrives at Amanda's, they share an awkward cup of coffee. As he goes to leave, Amanda asks him to stay because she doesn't want to be alone. While sleeping on the couch, Daniel is awoken by his brother telling him Amanda is in danger and to get her out. Armed men then burst in and Daniel attempts to stop the men, but they fire at Daniel. Kurt tries to push his brother out of the way, but ends up going inside of him, creating haunt for the first time. When the two united, Daniel is overwhelmed. His eyes begin to glow and a white and black substance begin flowing from his mouth, eye sockets and ears. The substance stopped the bullets and covered his entire body. He leaped at the two intruders and swiftly and easily decapitated them. Daniel and Kurt are inside one body and share control. Daniel is absolutely shocked by his actions, but seems to be in control as Kurt tells him to go to the window. And before Daniel can ask why, Kurt has them leap out of the high rise window in search of the others looking for Amanda. When they find them, Kurt's fighting skills take over, but Daniel internally struggles with Kurt so that he does not have complete control. They still bicker at each other even when they are fused, but after killing the men, Daniel doesn't know what to do, but Kurt instructs him to call a quote-unquote cleaner. The cleaner arrives to dispose of the bodies and evidence, but first throws Daniel into the wall asking how he got his number, and it turns out the cleaner was a really close friend with Kurt and considered him a brother. Amanda awakes to a spotless apartment and shares another awkward conversation with Daniel, actually wanting to take him to breakfast, but she was late to work. As Daniel leaves to go back to the church, Kurt begs him to keep looking out for Amanda in case she's still in danger. Daniel refuses, thinking he'd had enough and he didn't like what was going on. He also hates them both and it was hard to see her again. And also, since he's the only one that can see Kurt, everyone thinks he's going crazy. Daniel arrives at church to apologize for another night away, but the father he's talking to is dead. 
He looks and finds his colleague gutted and then is confronted by the attacker, a man from Kurt's past named Cobra. Kurt, in his ghost form, had also followed him, and in an instant the two fuse together again to fight Cobra. The two brothers arguing confuses Cobra, but the fight ends when Hunt slips in blood, and by the time he was back on his feet, his new enemy had disappeared. Kurt tells Daniel whether he likes it or not, he's involved, and of course Daniel is upset. But at this point, Kurt has him go to a safe house, since Amanda is safe while she's at work. At the house, Kurt leads him to a bedroom closet where he reveals a secret elevator that takes him to the headquarters of where Kurt used to work. The elevator is actually only one of eight entrances to the headquarters. After going down eight stories, Daniel is quote unquote greeted by Kurt's old co-workers. The group of people have Daniel surrounded and as they aim their weapons at him, Daniel is warned by Kurt not to make any sudden movements. And when he simply asks for help, he ends up getting shot with a tranquilizer dart. Daniel wakes up in a prison cell with Kurt at his side, but they are not alone in the cell. Several homeless Bolivians are being held there as well. The homeless Bolivians in the cell were the exact same ones of the group that Kurt saved from Dr. Schillinger's experiments on his last assignment. But the ones that were being held somewhere else in the facility are much worse or dead. A seemingly crazed Bolivian woman tells Daniel that she sees his brother's spirit next to him, and she's the first to call them haunt. She explains that their blood keeps them connected, and instead of passing on completely and letting his essence move on, Kurt became spiritually tethered to Daniel. Daniel's spirit is somehow protecting Kurt from the other realm to which he should have passed on to. She ends her cryptic speech by saying, and I quote, Haunt, that is what you are. You keep this one here, his life depends on you. But I think very soon your life would depend on him, end quote. Now, due to his powers and abilities and his influence on the Image Comics universe, for my 1 to 10 rating, I'll give Haunt a rating of 6, which is an expert rating. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you next time. Be sure to like and subscribe to The New Sage.